Good morning, civics scholars. Um, here is your unit one test review that I said I would try to get up and posted this weekend. So I'm going to go back through this test review in case you needed to um, yourself go back through and have a few things explained to you. Um, if you're using this and afterwards you still have some questions, um, again, by all means, reach out to me today sometime, shoot me an email, um, or come find me tomorrow, maybe before your test, if you've got it on Monday, or if you've got it on Tuesday, uh, you still got a day or um, an extra day there to, to get a hold of me at school sometime and, and let me know. But uh, here we go. Let's start with these types of governments. Um, first of all, communism, government that redistributes all wealth equally. Remember, that's Karl Marx was the political philosopher that believed that uh, communism was the ideal form of government. And that's where, hey, the workers would take over. Um, they would do all the work. There would be um, many bosses or business owners or kind of wealthy elite and that then all of the wealth could be distributed equally and that uh, we'd get rid of like social structure, or excuse me, social classes. Um, and then there'd be no conflict because everyone would have equal stuff and everyone would get along fine then. The next down there's federalism. There's the power to make decisions is divided between a central government and lower levels. That's what we have in the United States where we've got the, the federal government at the top um, they have some decision-making power, and then that power is also shared with like state or more regional governments. Um, and then at the bottom, we also have local governments like counties and cities, and they all have some power to govern. Uh, then we have a unitary system. That's a strong central government that controls the weaker state and local governments. Um, for example, if if the United States was a unitary system, we'd have that strong central government at the top. We would still have lower levels of government like states and cities, but they would have very, very little power. And reuni means one. So any of those governments we talked about where there's like one central power at the top, so a monarchy, a totalitarian, dictatorship, those would all kind of be considered unitary systems. All right, then there's oligarchy. A system of government in which a few people rule uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they're the wealthy people that rule a few people, but there's a there's a group at the top that um, is ruling over the government decisions. A constitutional monarchy, there's a monarchy where the monarchy is just a figurehead. The country is ruled through elected parliament members. Uh, we've said England has that right now. They have a monarchy in place where... Um, power, if there is any, is passed down throughout a family, but that family, <coughs> excuse me, that monarch really has very little governing power. Um, all the governing power is held by the parliament that is elected by the people. Uh, absolute monarchy. And there's a system of government in which a king, queen, emperor, etc. is the sole and absolute monarch. There's where the monarchy does have governing power, and they have all of the governing power. Uh, a confederation where the power to make decisions is held at lower levels, and the central government is only given powers that the lower levels wish to grant. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of what a unitary system is. So in a confederation, for example, if the United States was a confederation, we're not. But if we were, that would be like all 50 states. So the lower levels of government, they hold all the power. Um, they're making all the decisions they want to for themselves. And then there is a strong, or excuse me, not strong, a central government at the top, but um, very weak. It does not hold much power. A republic is a government where power is held by the people and their elected officials. So we have that in the United States, a republic. Um, then a dictatorship, a system of government in which one person has seized power and is sole ruler. That would be like a unitary form of government, um, but again, it's that sole ruler, one person making all the decisions. A democracy, that's a government where power resides with the people. Um, again, we've got a form of democracy in the United States. Presidential democracy. Um, that's what we've got in the United States. Again, a form of government in which a head of the government leads an executive branch like our president does. Mr. Biden is in charge of our executive branch. And that executive branch is separate from the legislative branch. We've said our legislative branch in the United States is what we call Congress. Remember the Senate and House of Representatives, and they're elected separately. So the executive branch, legislative branch are completely separate. 
a parliamentary democracy, form of government in which a head of government comes from and gains their power from the legislative branch. We said England is like that. Um, remember, we split in class um, between the two political parties when we acted like we were parliament and the political party that had the majority of the people got to choose from them who their prime minister was. So the prime minister isn't necessarily chosen in a separate election. Um, the prime minister is chosen as a person that goes to parliament and then whoever that majority party in parliament is gets to choose who their prime minister is. Um, a totalitarian government. system of government where every single part of the individual's life is controlled and watched by the government. Uh, again, another unitary type of government. But, but remember, it's total control. Uh, representative democracy, a democracy where the people elect representatives to rule for them. We have that in the United States. Remember, we elect people to go and do our governing for us. Uh, the de representative democracy, that would go along with uh, John Locke was the political philosopher that felt strongly about that. A direct democracy is a system of government where the people rule. Uh, that would have been John Jacques Rousseau would have been the political philosopher there. That's where everybody is involved with all of the government decision-making and all the voting. And we can't do that in the United States because we have too many people. Could we do it in our classroom? Yes, because we've got 25 to 30 people. We're meeting there every day. Uh, we'd be able to do that. And lastly, a monarchy. A system of government that is run by a king, queen, emperor, and their family. Power is usually passed down within the family. All right, then those political philosophers. Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Karl Marx, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Thomas Hobbes, he was in favor of that totalitarian absolute monarchy. And he believed in that because he did not believe people had the ability to govern. He believed people were selfish and evil. And so they needed that one person to make sure that People were living their lives without doing bad things and have complete control over that. John Locke, representative of democracy, believed that people were able to govern because they were good. Uh, people were not only out there to look out for themselves, but they would make the best decisions um, in terms of governing, governing for everyone. Karl Marx, communism, he also believed that people were good, and if we could get rid of the any wealth. Um, any people that kind of were in a higher social class, uh, if everybody's in that same social class and everybody had equal amount of stuff so that the equal distribution of wealth, that life would be good and we wouldn't have any conflict. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, pure democracy, again, believed people were good and that people should have the ability to govern um, and be in on all the governing. So the decision making in terms of government and also voting on everything. The five purposes of government, we, we talked about four. So the four that we talked about, one would be public service. That's things that the government does in terms of providing, like I got the examples here, schools, transportation would be two good examples of that. Law and order, another thing that the government provides for its people, uh, that'd be courts, police. Um, in the United States, the FBI is like our country's police force. Uh, in Zealand, Michigan, we have the Zealand police force. Security, now we're talking about like national security, so our military uh, is probably the best example of that. And then lastly, economic decisions. So the government tries to help control inflation, um, interest rates, uh, trade with other countries, and then they kind of set our tax policy, how much we're going to get taxed in the United States, and then what we're going to use our taxes for. That citizenship naturalization process here. Um, those couple things that have to happen for someone to become a naturalized citizen, not if they were born a citizen, but to go through that process of becoming a citizen. Um, remember, they have to basically declare that they're going to do that, um, a declaration of intent. Um, then they have to have lived in the United States for five years. They have to have lived in the state that they're applying for citizenship in for three months. Uh, then they have to like interview with, with the government and in that interview, they're looking to see, um, first of all, if you're of good moral character, and then they're also assessing whether you have the ability to, to read and write and speak some basic English, 
then you have to take a test. Remember, there's that 10 question test where you have to get six out of 10 questions correct about American history and Amer American government. And then uh, if they've completed all those steps, then they go to like a ceremony. It's almost like a graduation uh, type of ceremony where they have to um, basically pledge an oath to the United States. The five legal duties of citizens, they have to obey the law, attend school, pay taxes, serve in court, and defend the nation. Remember, serving in court, you either have to do that through um, if you're asked to serve on a jury in a court case, or if you're asked to um, be a witness in a court case, you have to go do that. Uh, defending the nation, now not everybody has to go fight in the military, but remember young men, when they turn 18, they have to uh, register with the government and be a part of that selective service or the draft. And then the five responsibilities of citizens. So be informed, contribute to the common good. Remember, that's uh, donating maybe money, time to charities or getting involved in a co political campaign or the political process. Uh, vote, respect others' rights, and respect diversity. Okay, next we have this quiz that obviously we're, we're not going to grade it right or wrong, but these were great things to look at. Uh, to go back over some of those definitions of the types of governments. So we started with one, a dictatorship. That'd be I, in this government, one person has seized all the power. Two, an oligarchy. That was B. That's a rule by a few people. Three was anarchy. That's C, no government at all. Four was E, an absolute monarchy. So that's where a king or queen makes all the decisions, absolute power that they have. Five was G, a presidential democracy. People rule in this type of government. An example would be the United States. That's us. Six was a parliamentary democracy. That was F, where the people rule also in this type of government. An example would be Great Britain. Seven was totalitarian. It was J. Every single part of the individual's lives is controlled or watched by the government. Number eight was A, communism. Let me scroll back up for that. All resources are spread out equally in this type of government. Nine, aristocracy, D. Uh, that's ruled by a few wealthy individuals. And then 10 was constitutional monarchy, which was H. In this government, the king or queen, queen is only a symbol of the nation. Number 11, describe the difference between a direct and indirect or representative democracy. Uh, in a direct democracy, all the people get to be in on all of the decision-making and they're directly involved in most government decisions. Uh, as opposed to a representative democracy, that's where the people are still involved in some of the government decisions, but they choose their representatives to do their governing for them. Twelve, please describe the difference between a unitary and a federal system of government. Uh, in a unitary system, there's a strong central government that makes most decisions for all the levels of government. Unitary, remember, one, uni, one. So that one strong central government's at the top. They are making all of the decisions. In a federal system, the power is divided and shared between a central government and regional local governments. So we've got a federal system in the United States. 13 through 16 says, please label each form of government as a unitary confederation or federal system of government. Uh, a totalitarian government for 13 would be a unitary system. Unitary, one. Uh, the government is in total control or that one group or that one person is in total control. So unitary. 14, a democracy, that was F, a federal system. That's like, again, what we've got in the United States, where we've got those different levels of government that share power. 15, a dictatorship, dictator, one person, unitary. And 16, the former Soviet Union would be considered a confederation. Uh, as we talked about in class, again, that's where a bunch of smaller, more regional or local governments like states, they hold all the power. Um, there is a central government at the top most of the time, but they have very, very little power to govern. And true or false, 17, in a democracy, only the wealthiest people have the choice or the chance to vote. That's false. 
uh, in a democracy, everybody, for the most part, has a chance to vote. 18, a characteristic of a democracy is that individuals have freedoms. Yes, true, they do. Um, as you see in the United States, we do have some individual freedoms. 19, in a democracy, there is more than one political party. Yes, true. Um, many democracies have numerous political parties, as we do in the United States. And we only hear about two of them most of the time, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, but there are, there are many political parties. There's more than one. And number 20, in a democracy, the minority makes the decisions. That'd be false. Uh, the majority makes the decisions, not the minority. Um, I just listed some things here in the presidential and parliamentary side for comparing and contrasting presidential and parliamentary democracies. Uh, presidential, we've got three branches of government where power div is divided. Parliament only has that. They, they do. They have three branches of government, but the legislative branch is supreme. There's not equal power sharing between the two or between the three branches of government. In a presidential system, they've got a president that's chosen by the people. On the flip side, the parliamentary government has a prime minister, but it's chosen from the legislative branch. The people in their parliament actually choose who that prime minister was. Presidential side, they appoint nine legislative people to fill their cabinet. Remember, that's the group of advisors to the president. In a parliamentary system, um, the prime minister chooses their cabinet members from people in parliament. They do both have a top court. Um, in a presidential system, that's the Supreme Court and their big powers. They can declare acts of the legislature or the executive branch unconstitutional, basically say, no, you can't do that. In a parliamentary system, they still have a top court, but they can't overrule a decision that parliament makes. A president in a presidential system cannot remove people from the legislative branch. A prime minister can by calling for early elections. A president can be removed from office by one. There has to be a vote in the House of Representatives to say, yes, this person did something bad. Um, and if the vote is a yes vote by the, a majority of people in Congress, excuse me, or in their legislative branch, <coughs> then it goes to a trial in the Senate. Uh, a prime minister can be removed through a no confidence vote where the majority then, if there's a no confidence vote, the majority then decides to change their leader. They, they, they vote for somebody else to be prime minister. Um, in a presidential system, there are political parties that are less structured. And so it's, it's not uncommon for the president and one or both of the houses of Congress, so the Senate or the House of Representatives, to be from different political parties, where in a parliamentary system, that same political party controls both the legislative and executive branch. And that's all the time. Because remember, the executive, the prime minister, comes from the legislative branch and the, the political party that is of the majority. And then lastly, the legislative branch has all lawmaking powers in a presidential system, where in a parliamentary system, parliament has all of the lawmaking powers as well. So there are some similarities and differences between a presidential system and a parliamentary system. Okay, then the true and false dealing with presidential and parliamentary governments. Uh, number one, both presidential and parliamentary systems have one specific executive leader. Yes, they both do. Uh, presidential system has a president. Parliamentary system has prime minister. Number two, in both a presidential and parliamentary democracies, the, uh, the people elect their legislators. Yes, they do. They elect people to Congress in the United States, for example. Uh, and then, for example, in England, they elect people to um, to Parliament. Number three, in both presidential and parliamentary systems, the people elect their executive leader. False. In a parliamentary system, the people don't get to elect a prime minister. Parliament does. Number four, presidential democracies do not have an independent judicial branch of government. False. We do. We've got our whole judicial branch, which in theory has one third of the power at the federal level. Number five, Parliamentary democracies do not have an independent judicial branch of government. False. They do. They just don't have nearly as much power as a judicial branch in a presidential system. Six. Parliamentary democracies have a combined executive and legislative branch. True. 
they're combined. And we say they're combined because the executive comes from the legislative branch. Seven, a president is elected by the legislature, so Congress, in a presidential democracy. That's false. Um, a president is elected by the people through a separate election. Uh, eight, a prime minister does not serve for a specific set term. Correct. Prime minister can serve for one week. They can serve for one year. They can serve for 10 years. Number eight, a prime minister does not serve for a specific set term. Oh, we just mentioned that. Yes. Um, sorry. Number nine, a president does not serve for a specific set term. That's false. President does. If they get elected to become president, they get a four-year term in the United States, at least. Some countries are longer or shorter, um, but there is a, a set term before they have to run for re-election. And number 10, which system has more specifically structured political parties? That would be a parliamentary system. All right. Um, a, most of the stuff on the test is stuff we just talked about in this review. Is everything in the review guide? No. Um, but most of it is. So if you study this up, um, if you feel good about this, uh, you should be um, be solid for the test. Uh, come tomorrow, Monday, for you odd hours or on Tuesday for the even hours. If you've got questions, go back through here, um, email me, come find me at school, and hopefully we can uh, make sure your questions are answered so that you are fully prepared for the test coming up. Uh, hopefully you use this wisely and you study a little bit um, and we will see you in class.